With the Carolina Panthers Fan Fest being on an inconvenient Wednesday night in Charlotte on a day that I just couldn't make it up there, the Panthers returned back to Wofford for day seven. Yes, we are seven days deep in the training camp. You know your boy is back at it again with another recap. We got a lot of things to talk about, of course. Three major takeaways like I always do. The play of the day. And then at the end, I have a lot of major rapid fire points. So make sure you stick around for the whole video so you don't miss a thing. But... Let me introduce myself. My name is Aaron Duncan here with the Necessary Blunt and Sports Talk. Every video gets started by saying, what up, though? And here on the Necessary Blunt and Sports Talk, I do recap and analysis of the Carolina Panthers. So if you want to see in-depth, exclusive training camp recaps like this, because I'm there at training camp with the clips included on these recaps, hit that subscribe button down below and the bell icon. It's going to make sure you get notifications because I'm doing these daily every time they have a practice here at Wofford. And it's been a very exciting thing. So we have a couple things to get into. So make sure you do that. And also, show a little love. Get a video, a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. And if you want to show a little bit more appreciation, you can always leave a super thanks. Look down below the video near the like button. It's going to be a heart with a dollar sign in it. That super thanks. It's pretty much like a tip jar. Uh, for helping me put some gas in my tank for hitting these highways and byways. Getting to go to these practices. All right. So let's go ahead and get into it. Like I said, I always do my three major takeaways. You guys know what takeaway number one always is. is Bryce Young. Bryce Young had a pretty efficient day, I would say. Um, he pretty much took what the defense gave him. This was he broke the streak of not throwing interceptions. I know a lot. Some of y'all were concerned, and of course, David Newton from ESPN kept talking about, "Oh, Bryce Young threw a pick for four days in a row. Bryce Young threw a pick for five days in a row." I wasn't really concerned about those because there were a lot of circumstances uh, that 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 kind of changed while he was doing it. They weren't the same mistakes over and over again. He didn't look skittish and making bad decisions. He did have that one head scratcher, the Louvu, that I talked about. But the other picks where he were late, he owned up to him. Frank Wright talked about the pick he threw at Fan Fest where they told him to throw it into the end zone on the two minute drill. So there's reasons or excuses, whatever you want to look at, if you want to be a pessimist, of those interceptions. And like I said, he's not repeating the same mistakes. So I'm good on that. I thought that the interview by Bradley Bozeman talking about him going or doing a presentation on offensive line protections just says a lot about the type of guy Bryce Young is. He's performed like a pro every step of the way, and I, I'm just excited to have him. So, like I said, no interceptions today. Had a solid day overall. Um, there were times, though, that he really couldn't find anyone. And we'll talk about the defense a little bit more in this section, but this was a day that the defense put in a lot more man coverage. They installed man coverage, and some guys struggled to get open at times. And this was the first time we saw Bryce get show some, like, visible and legit emotion. Like, there was a play. He was dancing around doing what Bryce Young does. Nobody still got open. The play got blue dead, and he threw the ball in disgust. And I'll play the clip right here. But yeah, usually we see Bryce, the soft-spoken guy that talks at the interviews, is very, very grateful and things just feel surreal. He's just trying to take things day by day, control what he can control. Usually we see the canned up emotion, buttoned up guy that Bryce is. So today he actually let it loose on the practice field. I was happy to see that he was pissed off a little bit because that was his final rep of that set. And I like seeing that because it means something to him. You know what I'm saying? Like he, he he's showing his frustration. He's showing that he's upset that things aren't going right. You know what I'm saying? He wants things to he wants to push and make sure we are getting things together. So I love seeing that side of him, man. Like he had some pretty good plays today. Had a beautiful play to Hurst. Uh, it wouldn't be a play today, Kennedy, but it was his first attempt of practice. I'll show the clip right here. I heard shot about the line. Thanks. 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 Oh, good catch. And I keep telling you guys that Hurst is one uh tight end number one, of course, easily, but we know, like I said, the value of a good tight end with Hayden Hurst. And he, Bryce Young, I think he's starting to learn the personnel a lot more. He tries to throw these other passes to tight ends like that, like he did to Hurst, and they don't always come down with it. He started putting those passes in the chest of like a Sullivan or Ian Thomas. But he worked the tight ends a lot more than I that I've ever seen so far. So I'm loving to see these tight ends get great work in. And he knows that he can throw it outside uh, the, the torso, I guess, for Hayden Hurst, and he's going to catch it. But the other guys... It's got to be right there between those two digits, you know what I'm saying? But I love that Bryce showed that emotion. I love that he worked through it. I love that he still had an efficient day. Of course, he hooked up with DJ Chark. I have, I am ashamed of myself. 
Uh, my camera work wasn't the best on that rep, so I'll show a, a put together clip that I pieced together. So enjoy. As you can see, I had to tag in my friends from the Carolina Panthers to help me out with that edit because I did not follow it that well. But we live and we learn. Today I was a little bit, I was a little bit lackadaisical <laughs> in my recording there. But it is what it is. You guys, let me know down below in the comments how you feel about Bryce Young showing that little, 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 little angry streak, man. With the days of camp starting to get to him, things aren't going right, and he, he kind of got a little frustrated. Showed a little bit of emotion. Seems like he's trying to open up a little bit, get a little bit more comfortable. So I want to get you guys' thoughts about how you felt but also there were some comments obviously about the talent show and what he performed and he sang at the talent show he was said that he performed love by keisha cole uh, a classic r&b song and somebody really pointed out to me on twitter that they found an old video of him doing it back in 2021 in alabama i'll put it in right here bro my mama clown Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay then. <laughs> Dog, this is some of the worst, some of the worst singing I've ever seen in my life. I'm glad he's a quarterback and not a not an artist, but this is terrible. I mean, I mean, I guess he, he was feeling it. He, he was singing like he had been through something, but it was pretty bad singing. I think they should show the rookie talent show on whatever camp confidential the panthers do if they don't it'll be an abomination and a travesty that they'll deprive the fans of seeing that type of uh of embarrassment for bryce young but we'll see what happens but like i said you guys let me know how you feel about bryce young starting to open up and show a little bit more emotion oh i gotta add my little nugget of course andy dalton had another good day i'm starting to build more and more confidence about andy dalton as a quarterback, like I said, he's more than a mentor, man. He can play. He's putting some balls on the money. He 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 can throw a touch. He can throw on the run. He's mobile enough. He's smart. He's confident, man. Andy Dalton has been cooking, man. So shout out to Andy. All right, major takeaway number two is the depth at the edge position. So you guys have been watching me. I, I, dude, Kobe Jones has been a baller. Kobe Jones, I'm going to start calling him the Blue Mamba if he keep making plays. Like I said, I need to see him do this in joint practices before I can be a real believer. But this guy was an undrafted guy. He was added to the practice squad for the Panthers last year during the season. Never really broke through, but he had a great spring and has had a great camp. And with Marquise Haynes being injured still, he's gotten a lot more in the rotation with YGM, and he has not disappointed. But not just him. E.K. Leota, another guy that plays edge number 46, he, I guess he's a Pacific Islander of Asian descent. This dude has a great first step off the line. I'm going back over some of the film, and you can see that he's got two steps down coming off the line before the opposite end, DJ Johnson, even gets one step down. This dude fires off the ball so fast, plays with that high motor, reminds you kind of a Frankie Louvre, you know what I'm saying? Frankie Louvre plays with that high motor. Frankie Louvre is fast, but he just pl he plays faster than he really is, and he plays with a high motor. He doesn't hesitate. He runs and go gets it. You know, run and hit fat. I love that. So these two guys, one under, both undrafted guys, have really been making a name for themselves. Kobe Jones, like I said, been rotating with YGM with the first and second team against the first and second team reps. E.K. Leota has been with the second team a lot, but he's been making a name for himself to the point that they're going to have to start giving him some opportunities against the first team to really see what he can do. Regardless, Ejiro Ivero talked about the ends. They need to be in full pass and get some real work. We've only had two full padded practices, so the joint practices uh, next week with the Jets will be huge for them. But – uh, I, 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 I love seeing this from undrafted guys. I'm the one. I got to take full credit. I put people on Marquand McCall last year. I pointed him out during preseason how he was making plays. I built the hype train. People saw it and believed it. Now Marquand McCall is making great plays. People are taking notice to him just because he's so big. Bully ball McCall. But I got I to gotta toot my horn and pat my own back on that. Uh, Kobe Jones is one of the guys I'm going to be rooting for as well. He's been making a name for himself. Um, I really started paying attention to E.K. Leota, though. I can't take credit for that. People have been telling me about him. I just really started paying a lot of attention to him. Um, but he's been rushing pretty well. He, he's usually on that far side of the field, so I don't always see him. I see Kobe pretty easy because he's on the side. So I've been noticing Kobe. He jumps off the tape. So shout out to Kobe. But I can't even knock. Can't even knock him. YGM has actually played fairly decent and has maintained the dominant amount of first-team reps. He has been rotating, like I said, with Kobe Jones, but I have not seen a series start without YGM 
being out there first. And like I said, he looks pretty good coming out of that stance. I've seen him give Icky a little bit of work ever so often, so he's showing some flashes that he's gotten better, man. I got to give him some credit. Uh, Lubu walked up there today on the edge for the first time a few times a day for the first time I saw that in certain packages. Um, in nickel, a few times I saw that with Shaq being the only linebacker. be Burns, 3D D lineman, and then they put Lubu on the other edge, so a five-man front. Then we have Shaq, and then Chin would come from that nickel position, and he would move towards the box, and they have more DBs there. So they have four DBs with uh, two, I mean, obviously two linebackers with Luvu being on the edge. I know I said a lot right there, but they're just playing around different combinations and formation. It's really dope to see with them experimenting, and I love to see that. Uh, Jiro had comments, like I said, he talked about somebody's going to step out of that group. I'll play the clip right here, what he said. To the preseason games, I think it'll tell more of the story. Um, but uh, really love the progression of those guys. And, uh, but, you know, we need somebody to step up. That's a, that's a fact, and uh, we got to just continue to push those guys towards it. Yeah, I mean, we feel uh, good about where our guys are right now. We love our roster, especially at that position. And, um, you know, there's going to be great competition for that for that spot. And uh, it's not just going to be one guy. You know, it's you know, you just can't have two rushers in this league. You got to have multiple guys that could get the job done. And uh, we feel where the guys feel good about where the guys are going, though. But he's right. It's probably going to be by committee, but somebody has to step up. Who's it going to be? Like I said, Kobe and E.K. Leota have been stepping up. YGM, man, he's been stepping up, too. I'm not... YGM has shown me way more bad tape to the point that I can't crown him or stamp him until I see him actually do it against somebody in a different color jersey. So we're going to find out a lot in these joint practices about our edge position. And Yannick, you got, Yannick and what is his name? And Gakwe, and Gakwe that a lot of fans were targeting because he was a free agent play for the Colts at double digit sacks last year. He ended up signing with the Bears, a guy that a lot of fans might have been disappointed in. He's not that great against the run. And I think that's the first thing that EJ Vera always talks about in his interviews is stopping the run first and earning the right to rush the passer. So he was never going to be a, a good fit for us, especially at a click of $10 million when we haven't even paid Burns. So maybe the answer is on the roster. I know Ron Rivera's uh, famous words were the answer is on the roster, but a lot of times it wasn't. That may be the case that it is this time, and we can find some undrafted free agent gems, same way we did with Frankie Lou. Frankie Lou, who he fell in our lap, ended up being – playing pro bowl caliber football he had better stats than some pro bowlers or all pro guys but sometimes you get lucky and find those gems man that they just need it's crazy to me that guys can really bounce around the league because kobe jones he's been on three different teams three or four different teams came out of mississippi state when he's 25 years old some guys just develop slower and it's just amazing that um when you put a guy in your system you get him around certain coaching coaching matters system matters and opportunity matters as well. The fact that Haynes is down, he's taking advantage of that opportunity when getting their reps and to the point that he's going to force himself to get on that field, man. So you guys let me know how you feel about some potentially undirected free agent type of players emerging with, I mean, big play potential, starter potential, rotation potential with Kobe and stuff like that. You guys let me know how you feel about that down below in the comments. And the third big takeaway I want to talk about is our depth at safety. Because the reason why this came up for me is because I know Xavier Woods is a guy that we had last year. People talked about how smart of a vet he is, how he lines everybody up. We added Von Bell this season, and Von Bell is the exact same way. Super smart, a very communicative type player. But he has a little bit more attitude to Woods. He's more physical. I think he's a lot more instinctual as a football player. And just like, like he just he, he, he he's a harder hitter, of course, as well. I talked about him being a hitter in prior episodes. So that combination is going to be deadly. But not just that. I know we picked up Jamie Robinson. I see Jamie Robinson. He's very feisty. He needs a little bit of more fine tuning and coverage. But I think once the game turns on and things get live, he's going to pop and show up on tape because he has a motor. He's not scared. He's going to want to mix it up. He's got them honey badger type vibes where even though he's small, He's not scared. He doesn't care. The honey badger doesn't care. You know what I'm saying? So I want to see him fill some alleys. He's done it in practice, but I want to definitely see him in the game when it's live. But also, Sam Franklin, who's a special teams specialist, he had a phenomenal practice today. He had a couple good plays. One play, I'll show it right here. He was getting, he was covering man coverage on Steven Sullivan. Sullivan almost had it, but Sam Franklin stuck those hands in there and broke it up. But the very next play, then Andy Dalton came in. He almost picked off Andy Dalton on a hitch route. When I saw it in fast motion, 
I could have sworn he had it, but he's very high motor type of guy. He's using the blitz as well. Sam Franklin has been all over the place. I feel so good about our depth and safety, and it's great. And I think that plays a part, and also with Chin. You guys talking about Chin? Chin, he's been really down the line of scrimmage. He's played nickel, but he hasn't really. I haven't seen him drop deep at all. Yeah, he's covered in the middle at times, like shallow middle. But he's most of the time he's on the outside, on the edges, on the perimeter, guarding slot receivers, lining up in front of the trips receivers on bunch, coming blitzing off the edge as well. A very physical brand of football. Put him in space, not putting him in the box where guys want to, but putting him closer to the line of scrimmage, but in space as well where he can use that speed and take advantage of. He doesn't need to be in the box. I told you guys, he's not big enough. But he's also physical enough that he needs to be closer to the line of scrimmage and be able to use a tool uh, as a tool. And Vero talked about using him as a tool and how versatile of a piece he was. And uh, he doesn't want to give stuff away, of course, but he was very, very complimentary of Jeremy Chin. I have a soft spot for Jeremy Chin. He's one of my favorite players on the team. So I'm excited to see what Averro does with them. You guys let me know down below in the comments how you feel about our safety depth and me telling you about some of these guys having better days and where do you how are you where are you on the chin spectrum? You still trying to put him at linebacker or put him in the box? Or how do you feel about me saying that he's been closer to the line of scrimmage, just not in the box? Sometimes he goes in the box, like I said, in those packages like I talked about with Louvre on the edge and stuff. But nine times out of ten, unless the, the formation is shifted one way or the other after the play, he's going to be on the outside towards the line of scrimmage, down the line of scrimmage, but closer to the line. But, uh, but away from all the garbage and trash so he doesn't have to deal with any offense alignment. So I want to get you guys' thoughts about that type of Jeremy Chin usage because I think that's really only a taste, but I think it's a good preview. So I want to know your thoughts. All right, so it's time for the play of the day. And this one didn't count, but it definitely looked pretty. I know we've been begging for Terrace Marshall Jr. to get involved. This time Bryce gave him a shot. He threw it deep down the sideline, and he almost put Dante Jackson on a poster. I'll show it right And if you slow it down, you can see that his feet weren't in bounds. He didn't only think he got any of them in bounds. But because it was just a good coverage by Dante to squeeze him to the sideline and not give him any room to operate. But this is what we wanted to see. We wanted to see Bryce giving him a chance, throwing it up, giving him those 50-50 balls. Terrence Marshall Jr. is not the best guy at separating on certain routes, but those 50-50 balls, he's great at contested catches, so I'm glad that we finally got to see Bryce taking a shot, especially against a guy like Dante, who's our starting corner, and really elevate and go up and try to make a play. It was play of the day. He did not come down with it, but I've been begging so much to see Terrence make these type of plays in the team periods or whatever that I got to give it to Terrence for play of the day. So shout out to Bryce and shout out to Terrence for that completion. All right, it's time for rapid fire. The first thing, it's a little personal side victory. I got my Frank Wright throwback jersey autographed today. Yes, I finished. I fully accomplished all my goals of getting players signature. I forgot to tell you guys, I got my Bryce jersey signed and my Jeremy Chin jersey signed lat on the day one of camp. And it was funny because I ended up popping up on the news and, and, and one of my homeboys, John from One Carolina, shout out to him. He found me on the news and it looked like this. Watch how that boy Dunk come up out of nowhere. <laughs> Shout out to Dunks. And people on Twitter were clowning me because they said it looked like I teleported out of nowhere. But what really happened is I wasn't planning on getting a Bryce autograph. I bought my jersey. I went ahead and packed it up. I was about to leave. Randomly, Bryce decided to come over to where the area we were at. So I ducked down to go down and get into my bag. But the camera didn't catch all that. All this saw was me popping up out of nowhere with my jersey. So it's all fun and last, man. I could... I, I could take a joke, but even though they got me looking all unfavorable, but it still looked funny like that. But got my jersey signed. Uh, next up, the Panthers tried out seven players today after practice. One of them included Benny Snell, the former running back. Uh, he went to Kentucky, but he played for the Pittsburgh, a power back. A lot of you guys have been asking about who's a short yardage back. Benny Snell is potentially that guy. They don't always sign these guys right away, but they like to keep guys flowing that way. If they want to make a, a move down the line, they've already laid eyes on these guys so they don't have to wait. They can go ahead and do it, get, get it out the way, and get straight to the signing whenever they may need them. So keep an eye on Benny Snell. But also coming out that tryout, a cornerback was signed, Mac McCain. Mac McCain, he went to North Carolina A&T, a local product. I don't know. I guess he's, I don't know if he's a camp body or what. But their corresponding move is they cut Kobe Richardson, who was a corner as well. So Mac Mac. Mac McCain, that's a that's a uh, that's that's a that's a that's a mouthful. Shout out to uh, Chris McCain, 
uh, from the Mac Attack, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, from uh, <laughs> from Charlie Sports Radio. Um, no relation, I guess. I know that's spelled different, but it's funny, Mac. Uh, next up, Taylor Moten. He took a vet day, <laughs> and uh, it wasn't pretty. And the reason why I think Kobe Jones had a great day is because he was bullying Cam Irving. Near-death experience, you guys, hide your, hide your kids, hide your wife. This clip I'm about to play is not for the faint of heart. Bryce Young almost had a disaster, but the fact that Bryce Young has eyes in the back of his head, he avoided it. He almost got rolled up on by Cam Irving. I'll play the clip right here. Or like Pampers or Steve. Ooh, watch his legs, man. As you can see, Kobe Jones pretty much whooped Cam Irving around the corner, but the fact that Bryce, he was looking the other way, which is crazy. He has eyes in the back of his head, not really, but he has that great pocket presence and felt that he was able to step up with his feet, shuffle his feet and step up and get out the way and still get out the pocket. It was just like any other play that he makes and, and shout out to him. But Cam Irving, it was a tough day for him. Um, he was getting, he was, he was, he was getting all that work. You know what I'm saying? They took his lunch money. Uh, but they tried a lot of different combinations with Taylor Moten. Now, K. Mays even got some work at right tackle. I've seen Michael Jordan in there at times. They've been moving these group, groups around a lot just to kind of experiment on who's who. But um, I think we'll get a lot more clarity, like I said, in those joint practices of who's uh, group number one, group number two. And obviously that first depth chart will be coming out next week as well, leading up to uh, the first preseason game. So we'll also get a good look at the offensive line that way uh next up marquise haynes is still injured the back he missed practice today rajon Wright, the corner he's still out um no update on that no zavala today either i talked about they said maybe end of this week no we'll see i'll pay attention to the weekend i'll update you either tomorrow or sunday if he practices either of those days but it may be um going into that joint practice before the first time he's actually able to do it with the group he was active with the trainer today of course but no channel is vala i'll keep an eye on that uh tommy triple and chuba hubbard had some drops on at fan fest and they stayed at the practice together running routes catching passes they even went to the jugs machine was catching passes i know uh chuba hubbard's hands have been criticized by many fans and much maligned i think they've improved to a certain extent but they're still a work in progress, and he just really doesn't look comfortable catching passes. So shout out to him and Tommy staying after putting in that extra work and working with each other and realizing that, hey, man, we got we to gotta make this happen. So let's stay after putting in that extra work. I love that mentality of wanting to get better and not settling. I also saw Terrace and Mingo staying after practice, working together on some things as well. Just some little fundamental stuff, catching outside their body frame and stuff like that. So I love that. I love that buddy mentality of helping guys. Um, 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 push together and work together. So uh, iron sharp is iron, I guess. And so pushing each other to be better and, and just self-assessing that this is what you need to work on and the extra stuff as well. Um, for, today was the first time that refs had been at practice. So apparently, um, and I've seen it on other team clips, so I'm wondering why they didn't. But apparently uh, the refs kind of go on tour around all the teams just to give them an update on certain new rules and procedures that's in, that's in the works and kind of give them a dry run on that type of stuff. So uh, Ron Tolbert, you probably seen him, the black ref with the glasses, and the um, one of the one of the few female refs in the NFL uh, was was there as well. So that was pretty cool seeing those guys out there having legit stripes. I would have hoped we went full pads on a day with the refs, but it is what it is. Can't be can't be too choosy. Uh, and last but not least, small nugget outside of the team. Alvin Kamara, the running back for the New Orleans Saints, got suspended for three games by Roger Goodell. That includes that week two game, Monday Night Football, the home opener versus the Carolina Panthers. If we beat Atlanta, and since the best offensive player for the Saints is out, we can, gives us a little bit of leg up against the Saints. 2-0. Hey, man. Hey, man. That hype train going to start building, man. Regardless. I want to get you guys' thoughts down below in the comments about any of the rapid-fire things. If you got any questions, throw them down below as well. I'll chop it up with you guys. Also, you can pay attention to that stuff that practice tomorrow if you're curious about anything as well. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you guys are subscribed. Like I said, if you want to show some uh, some, some support, you can use that super thanks uh, with, the, like I said, dollar sign within their heart. Love you guys. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. I'll see you next time. Peace. Right here. No, that ain't shark. That's a win. Yeah,